Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ari. We moved to this working space about a year ago and we have been making videos here since then. And I always knew that a vintage looking wooden table would work perfectly for this space. I even had a base for it already, my grandma's antique zinger sewing machine. After we moved, Carrie attached a particle board to that uh, sewing machine stand to make a temporary table and I worked there since then, but this summer we've decided it was finally time to make the table I want. And so today I'll show you how we made this wooden table out of an antique sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started. I liked the base as it was, so I only needed to make a tabletop. To make the tabletop I'll use reclaimed wood, this is leftover lumber from building our gazebo and the first thing I'm doing is cutting them to size. I'm cutting off the very edge of each board since they are old and cheap and then cutting each board to size. In total I used three pieces of board for the table, they are about 6 by 2 inches size and I made them 41 inches long. Gary helped me with handling the longest board. After cutting, I'm giving the boards a good sand on the narrow sides to make them nice and even. They are a bit rounded after laying around exposed to sun and rains and I want the boards to be stuck nicely and evenly without major gaps. To connect all the boards into a single tabletop, Gary decided to make a kind of biscuit joint and as we wanted to use mostly what we already had, he's making these biscuits out of leftover plywood. He's actually cutting many many rectangles about 1 by 4 inches. After the biscuits are ready, he's marking where they're going to sit and after that he's making slots for the plywood pieces with the router. As experienced woodworkers say, this will not add much strength to the edge grain to edge grain joint, since gluing edge grain to edge grain is strong enough itself. But adding the biscuits helps keep the joints aligned and also we thought that extra strength is always a good idea. He's making four slots in each board to connect them side by side. Since our router is not very powerful, he has to go over the same place for several times till the slot is deep enough. After the slots are finished, we'll connect them together like this. So here I'm coming in with wood glue, here I'll use my favorite tight bond wood glue which is so great for gluing wood parts together and I'm applying it generously over the narrow side of the board and into the slots and after that I'm covering the plywood pieces with glue as well. And then I'm inserting the plywood pieces into the slots and I'm placing the second board on top and pressing it for the plywood pieces to get into the slots on the second board. Here I haven't pressed enough and Gary is giving a hand. And then I'm attaching the third board just the same way. I'm applying wood glue onto the narrow side and into the slots, placing the plywood pieces there and after that placing the third board on top. To 
keep the gaps as small as possible, I'm pressing all the boards together with clamps and leaving them overnight to dry well. Since the boards we had were not enough to make a good sized table, we're going to add a kind of framing to make the tabletop bigger. I'm using leftover lumber again, this time it's 2 by 3 inches boards and I'm cutting them at 45 degree angle to make a frame. And after I've cut the frame, Gary is making slots in it, just as he did for the main tabletop body. Then I'm assembling the tabletop. Here again everything is just the same. I'm applying a generous amount of glue into the joint, adding the plywood pieces and then placing each frame piece into place. After the tabletop is assembled, we're securing the frame with a strap clamp and leaving it to dry. Once the tabletop was ready, we found out the surface wasn't completely flat. The boards were arched and the joints were not perfect, so to make it nice and even I'm working it with a hand planer. This took me quite some time, since our planer is pretty old and is not adjusted well, so one side removes more wood than the other side, but after all I've leveled the surface more or less. In the very end, Gary is routing all the edges to make everything a little bit more uniform, a little bit easier to the touch, no harsh edges, anything like that. And now we can skip to the fun part. I wanted a very old looking with it and have a textured table, so I'm going to distress it. I'll start with a wire brush chucked to an angle grinder. And I'm going over the tabletop and hugging out any of the softer material. You see, the wood grain ha has harder and softer material and going over it like this takes away all the softer material, kind of creates peaks and wallies within the boards. For soft wood like pine, which I have, this wire brush is a bit too aggressive and makes a lot of deep scratches and frayed pieces and so I'll end up with quite a heavy distressed finish. After the grinder, I went over with a hand brush to knock down any frayed pieces. The hand brush makes kind of the same as the grinder brush did, but the effect is a bit soft. Actually, you can get it with a hand brush only, just the process will take much, much longer. Once finished brushing, I noticed that frayed pieces were not knocked down completely, especially on the frame, where the wood was softer than on the main body, so I'm finishing the distressing with a nylon brush. It makes the distressing kind of softer, rounding out any sharp edges and scratches. If you distress soft wood or you just want a light distressing, you may want to use just a nylon brush. And, as you may have noticed, I'm going along the wood grain all the time. This is to make less fraying and less scratching across the grain, which may look unnatural and a bit chaotic. And finally, to finish the distressing, I'm giving the tabletop a good sanding. This is to round those peaks a little and to make the table more pleasant to the touch. And I also want that look as if it was made of raw wood and then was polished naturally by touching and cleaning it for many years. So I want it very textured, but at the same time making you want to touch it again and again, because it's so smooth. After I like the finish, I'm dusting the table thoroughly and then I'll stain it. 
here I'm using a water-based stain in oak and what's so cool in the distressing technique I've used is that those areas with softer material get much more stain than the areas with harder material so the color is different and this makes wood texture really stand out which I like so much. The table looks really worn and kind of antique, just the effect I wanted to achieve. I'm giving it just one coat, this is enough because the brushed surface gets the stain really well. After it was dry, we moved to our workspace. Here I'm sealing the top with very thin polyacrylic sealer. I had to do this indoors since the can with the sealer was sitting here and I forgot to take it with me to the village where we made the table. I'm removing the tabletop which was there on the sewing machine stand. Gary made it for me out of particle board when we started filming here, but now it's time to let it go. And finally I'm screwing the new tabletop to place. I'm so happy with how it looks now. My dream was to make a very odd looking, cozy and atmospheric space with many vintage items, which would be so inspiring I think. And having a table that suits the room well was really important for me. Actually this is the main thing you see in videos, a kind of a background that really adds to the whole look. And that antique sewing machine base is something you don't really see in my videos, but it goes so nicely with the brick wall and the paint rack. Well, I hope you liked the video. Please let me know what you think of the table. Does it work for the space? Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!